I swore we'd never do this book, and here we are doing it. That's the theme of 2023. <laughs> breaking promises. Is breaking promises. This is Batman Punisher Lake of Fire from Denny O'Neill, Barry Kitson, and James Pasco. Lake of Fire? Lake of Fire. Lake of Fire! Is there a Lake of Fire? Do I get to see the Lake of Fire? Theoretically, yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, I want a physical lake of you fire. You do physically get kind of a lake of fire. It's more like the lake of fire is metaphorical, but oh, literally yeah. there is one. <laughs> and it's about preventing the lake of fire. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this a like an environmental disaster? No, no, no. it's, is, it's, it's is more it like hell? A, it, it is a shitty James Bond plot, oh. but if James Bond were a religious fundamentalist okay. and instead of believing in any established religion he believed in a phony baloney nonsense religion okay and uh, like you're getting get sent to the lake of fire or something oh he definitely thinks that he's going to the lake of fire because of his heresy but also there is one in this book <laughs> uh, okay i this sucks and i hate it so much <laughs> what, uh, what but rereading it i was like oh this isn't as terrible as i remember <laughs> well, I, I know uh -oh. it's Azrael. Yeah, it's Azrael. So, yes, it's it's Azrael. Yes, it's, it's 1994. And here's what's so funny is like I did a bunch of research on this for no reason, and it was all <laughs> hey hey you're a professional. It's yeah, true. That's why. Well, and I I really wanted to talk to anyone who might want to weigh in on this, but yeah. the writer Denny O'Neill who also was one of the editors on the book, is no longer with us. Mm. Barry Kitson, I couldn't reach. One of the associate editors passed away, and then another associate editor, I, I had to find him on LinkedIn, and he didn't get back to me, and I'm like, fine! I'm gonna use Wizard Magazine then! <laughs> and so I did, and it really was only to answer one question, and it was, okay, so like, I remember seeing in, maybe it was Comic Shop News, a solicitation that had like a small thumbnail of the front cover. Now, obviously on the cover, it's, shitty Asriel with his dumb ass suit. I don't even know why I didn't realize this. This is a crossover. It is a Marvel DC crossover. And in fact, it is the first Marvel DC crossover since the last one in the 80s, when the original crossover classics started. Well, the, yeah. the, the original crossover classics started in the 70s, but it was mm. the late 70s. And they were like, all right, here we go. Boom, 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 boom. And then Uncanny X-Men, Teen Titans, and then nothing for 10 years. And then 1994, the comic book industry is circling down the drain. And they're like, holy shit, we need to do something. How about crossovers again? Here's a Hail Mary. And this is the first one. And this is one of those things where they were like, let's start doing this. Because what they didn't do during the original crossover classics was, will you do one and I'll do one? No, that was just like, we'll do one and then maybe it'll fucking come out. <laughs> and that was it. It was JLA Avengers that killed the Marvel DC collaborations. They right. were just like, George Perez had been drawing them without consent or approval, and then they found out about it, and like, oh, okay. And then everything- oh, come on, isn't this cool? Yeah, everything fell apart, and so they were just like, never again! And then on they're like, oh my god, never say never again. So they were Break like, the glass. how about you do one and we'll do one. So this is the DC one, and we did the Marvel one already. I skipped ahead because I was like, the, the Marvel one's cool. It's written by Chuck <laughs> Dixon, who wrote both Punisher and Batman definitively, right. and it starred Bruce Wayne. And it was drawn by Jazzy John Romita Jr., who had never drawn Batman and was inked by Klaus Janssen. So like, there's a lot of like really neat firsts and interesting stuff. It's so ingrained in not just my affinity for Marvel DC crossovers, but in the show that I actually put a solicitation for that very crossover on this set over a year ago, and no one's pointed it out. Uh -huh. But that one is kind of a sequel to this. For okay. no reason. Oh, they so we're gonna get out. the backstory. Yeah, we get the backstory. Yeah, the backstory of that. The backstory to this fact. Jigsaw, the Punisher villain, went to Gotham. That's the plot of the last one and this one. Okay. What? Yeah. Uh... The, the question I wanted answered more than the fact that this was the first Marvel DC crossover since the 80s, and is dedicated to the memory of Ross Andrew, who drew the first Marvel DC crossover ever. And no, I'm not talking about the Wizard of Oz Marvel DC movie adaptation comic book. I'm talking about Superman Spider-Man, which is also on the set. When I first saw the thumbnail for this book, the cover had Punisher and Bruce Wayne Batman jumping. And I was like, cool. And then, a little while later, 
I saw a solicitation for this crossover after they had announced it. And they were like, it's happening, here it comes. And I was like, cool, because after Batman 500, Asriel got this dope Batman costume with like the, the mouth covering. Right. Yeah. But then when it came out, he looks like a big fat idiot. <laughs> and it's because they kept changing the cover. Wow. And I was like, what? How, how many iterations does this cover go through? And it's just, it, this is all just because I am a huge nerd. And as a child, I was like, wait a minute. That's like, different. That's different, and I don't know why, and you no one will tell me. You were great at spotting the differences in those two photos. Apparently, I, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but there are at least three covers for oh. this series. Punisher got it right out of the gate. Yeah. There's no changes. To There's no changes. I'm wondering if they couldn't change him because this is DC's publication, right? Yes, this is I'm DC's. Wondering, did Marvel send over <laughs> and be like, "This is what the Punisher's going to look like"? Well, they all came. It's funny because Chuck Dixon in the Crossover Classics Volume Two trade paperback explains that when the lawyers are done approving the crossover, then the respective publishers will send the creative team the character bibles, which will include what they look like, what they've been up to and all their histories, which they would never do today because someone would have to do it. And there's <laughs> and no, one who, know. Well, no one who works for Marvel or DC could do it because they haven't been working there long enough to remember any of that stuff, nor would anyone do it because no one who works there is getting paid to do any kind of work like that. That would require editors and stuff, which of course, as we all know, Marvel and DC have in short supply. <laughs> so yeah, it was just funny to see that. I also found out based on like just doing all this like research in Wizard Magazine, <laughs> that that Spawn Batman crossover also used to have a name and they just dropped it because they're like, uh, how about just Spawn Batman, end of story? And I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. can't argue with that. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, War Devil will always be the DC Batman Spawn crossover. Mm -hmm. yes. and we already spent over an hour talking about that. <laughs> so here we are in Lake of Fire. Another thing to point out about this, it technically takes place, it has to take place on the Earth where Marvel and DC coexist. The Earth that was established in Superman, right. Spider-Man, that was also deepened in Hulk versus Batman and X-Men versus Teen Titans, and reiterated in stuff like Spider-Man, Batman, and so forth. Right. But also <laughs> in Batman 508, I think, there's a DC publication. Azrael references Jigsaw as a villain he defeats. Wow. What's that all about? Access, the collaboration <laughs> hero of the Marvel DC crossover yeah. and Amalgam only appears outside of the DC Marvel crossovers in one DC comic book, hmm. a Green Lantern book. Huh. Written by the co-creator of the character in the first place. Uh, but DC of course is I want to use that. DC yeah. is always cool to use it after the JLA Avengers crossover. You know, right. Krona turns into an egg, and then the Just League go, what are we gonna do with this egg? In the book! Right. Like in DC! In DC, it happened. It happened! <laughs> and Marvel's like, imaginary universe happens in another photo, who cares? Yeah. Well, that makes sense, because in DC, it's like, oh, if that gets weird, we can just have a crisis and get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, Whereas Marvel's like, like, we gotta live with it. Yeah. Anything we, that happened, that's true. always happened. That's true, that's true. Maybe Azrael was just referring to a, a difficult puzzle he solved. <laughs> well, it was a capital J, but that being said, I was just like, oh, that's curious. It was the only time they ever referenced it, but right. still. I notice one of the differences, so, you know, they merge the eye holes mm -hmm. into like a vibe. They remove the leg pouches in this version yes. of him. Yes, yes. As if yeah. they're like, you know what? Those leg pouches make it a little too busy. Let's it's a little busy. I kind of figure it's because the Punisher already has that's a leg true. pouch. That's true. He already has leg and pouches. And they're like, no, they're not. They can't both have leg pouches. That would be, that would be obscene. I don't we want can't people look to like think. we're copying Marvel. <laughs> right. What's funny is in this very book, Punisher makes fun of Batman for having too many pouches. Well, yeah, he's got him on his utility belt. Well, no, so does yeah, Punisher. Yeah, no, he's referring to his utility belt. But okay. still, also, he has killed Abattoir, who is a lesser Batman villain that was dispensable enough for right. Jean-Paul to have killed. And right. really doesn't, like, strangle him or, or cut him with his razor-sharp talons. He just lets him fall off of some fire escape. So I don't have to kill you, but I don't have to save you either. It's a little bit of both, but he also. Uh, yeah. But but what's funny is, unlike in the Nolan Batman trilogy, <laughs> uh, in this one, immediately they're like, "You killed Abattoir. Yeah, you, you killed, killed him. him." Yeah. Jean Paul Valley is not as 
like bloodthirsty as Jason Todd was when he did the very same thing years prior. Like literally right. Jason Todd lets a man fall to his death and Batman's like, what happened? He was like two steps behind him. Yeah. And Todd goes, he slipped and just walks off. And Batman's like, oh, well, oh, that's that. that. Yeah. And oh, here, here Jason, it's like, Jason, you Jason. murdered you crossed a line. Yeah. 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 I have to take you down. <laughs> yeah, because you killed Avatar. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where Jean Paul is. Also, he's having like a real crisis of faith because, of course, mm -hmm. you know he was programmed by the system of this Knights Templar offshoot because they were right, they weren't right. as extreme as the Order of Saint Dumas, and uh, you know so he's he's all in on that. But he was supposed to be the avatar of well, really the the sword of vengeance of the Saint Dumas Order. Right. But uh, Asriel, he abandoned that to become Batman, and then immediately he started like adding Asriel shit to the Batman thing. Right, they couldn't let it go. Right, couldn't let it go. Just kept adding more accoutrements to his whole arsenal until he just basically looked like blue Asriel. Mm -hmm. Until he made Batman red, and then he just was Asriel again. <laughs> uh, but by that point, Bruce Wayne finally like fixed his broken back and shows up, and he's like, you suck. Uh, and that's during the Knight's End arc of the three-act structure of Nightfall. Anyway, <laughs> Asriel is like, oh man, Saint Dumas is like pissed at me because I've abandoned the Asriel moniker. Mm. The, I, I've, I've embraced the other mantle. And it, it, you know that's not connected to Saint Dumas. Like I'm no longer right. his avatar yeah. because I'm not Asriel. Yeah, which, I'm no longer the avatar of the real Saint Dumas. <laughs> right, yeah. Because it's real Because it's real and it's like, it isn't, but also fine, like whatever. <laughs> there's, there's also like a troll named Nomos who can sh wave a medallion in your face and give you untold Memories. Yeah, no one said this book. No one's never in any book. Oh, like he's, okay. no. but he was. I miss he, him. But no one's existed. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We're not gonna bring back no uh, But no <laughs> does show up. He does frustratingly return during oh. like during like rebirth or something. Oh, somebody remembers no That's awesome. I know. But uh, so he's he's having this problem where he's like ah, and he's having this vision. He's just straight up having a vision of hell. He is just in hell. He's not even. Or he's at a Metallica concert. <laughs> right now, this is you know, it's there's there's this caves and lakes of fire, and the fire oh, yeah. is being uh, uh, poured into the ground from the flaming sword of Saint Dumas. In this vision, okay. that Azrael's having. Right. And uh, so he is literally seeing a lake of fire. And. This is also metaphorical. But he's and having visions. He's having visions. He's straight up having visions. He's just seeing shit mm -hmm. with no psychedelic aid. He's just seeing stuff. And not good. when Saint Dumas looks at him, Azrael, or Jean-Paul Valley Batman, uh, he, he sees into his very soul and he calls him a heretic and a sinner. And Jean-Paul's like, no, I'm doing good. I'm being Batman. He's already like ejected Robin from the cave. He's also uh, attacked Bruce Wayne. Like there's, yeah. we are months away from shelving Jean-Paul Valley <laughs> as Batman completely. Right. Like, so is St. Dumas the audience? Right. <laughs> Being well, like, we don't want you anymore. Well, like, I, it's, it, it's like St. Dumas like, what? Like maybe, because Denny O'Neill is instrumental in all of this. And, and of course, when O'Neill did this in the first place, I want to believe he was doing a kingdom come where he's cautioning you against wanting this kind of thing. And this is where it goes <laughs> off the rails. And you can see, yeah. well, well, be careful it's what like, you wish for. Look at this for. guy. This guy's a freaking psycho. He's screaming at nobody in the cave. Yeah, like this is not Batman. Yeah. You don't want to read this. Also, he's a dumbass. That's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that would kill, but okay. That is, that is your first A material of 2023. Congratulations. <laughs> it's a high bar. You'll see if you can top it. He's not a detective. Right. And he's just he's just in the cave, like being Batman. And I love that, like, there's this visual I have of the Jean Paul Batman era. Like, after he kicks Tim Drake Robin out of the cave and he attacks Bruce Wayne and Bruce Wayne comes back and is all into turtlenecks for some reason. And uh, he's just like, oh, I'm Batman, everybody out of here. But like, I love Jean-Paul in the cave because like he is just certifiable. And he's yeah. seeing visions and he thinks he's, you know, uh, you know, some kind of Templarian avatar, but he's also trying to be Batman, but he's an idiot. <laughs> and he can't like fix the, the Batmobile. He's not a detective, so everything that he does yeah. is oh, he's not to, rich. He's not rich. He's just well, he and so Wayne Manor, like he breaks all the windows and shutters it up. Like Ugh. it just, it's like a homeless person is squatting in the Batcave, 
And we have a basis for comparison because there literally was a homeless person named Harold living in the Bat Cave at this time. Yeah, but and, he fixed things. Yeah, and he was good at his job and Jean Paul <laughs> kicked him out too. So it's just like he's squatting in the Bat Cave. I also find it a very interesting uh, synergy. Yeah. The fact that you have this cave with the lake of fire yeah. and you have the bat cave too. Right, right. He's yeah. He's literally in a cave when he's having this nightmare. It's true, room. yeah. And cave. like, look at these freaking columns. That's the exact same thing. I'm oh, I know, no. It could be that like, it's not even a dream. He's seeing it in front of him. Right. But he's just Ooh. like, oh man. Basically, Jean-Paul has this idea where like, oh, uh, St. Dumont's mad at me because I became Batman. But I have to assume, because I'm making it all up in my head, mm -hmm that if I appease Saint Dumas by doing good as Batman, that'll be just as good as being as real and doing whatever Saint Dumas would want me to do anyway. Right. So I gotta prove yeah. myself. What does it matter if you're doing it as Batman or as Azrael? Well, and that is the kind of crux of Jean-Paul's agony, is, oh no, I'm trying to appease a ghost that isn't real that's in my head, <laughs> and all the made up nonsense surrounding what their expectations of me are, and so, uh, he, he'll never actually achieve any success. Like, he's like, okay, I'll just be Batman and maybe St. Dumas will be happy about that. And it's like, St. Dumas doesn't give a shit because he's not even fucking real. <laughs> so You're so far off right. from anything that's going to help anyone. Yes. So he's like, all right, well, I guess I'll just be Batman. Like, I'll just keep doing the Batman thing. And so uh, I am an idiot, and I don't know how detective work works, but I heard uh, from my inherited surveillance technology from Batman... <laughs> that there's this experimental rocket fuel formula that was stolen from the Pentagon. Why the hell Batman would care is beyond <laughs> me, but it, it, it is connected where there's this guy named Cass Reimer who is fingered by the FBI. The FBI suspects this guy and they can't find him. He's off the grid. But according to Batman's old work in the computers, Reimer has connections to a mobster in the Batman comics named Tough Tony Bressy, who actually is in the Batman comics. It's not like every other Batman intercompany crossover where you have to invent a mobster <laughs> that just happens to have footholds in the underworld and then will be defeated by both heroes at the end of the story or killed by the Predator. And never heard of again. And then never seen again. Uh, but yeah, so Batman's like, all right, I will find Tony Bressy and I will threaten to stab him with my finger knives, and then he'll tell me where Cass Reimer is, and I'll find the rocket fuel for the government. If he has it. If he has it, that's the plan. That's, that's a great plan. That's the plot. The plot is uh. experimental rocket fuel was stolen by some guy who we invented for the story. That's who, it? That's it. Well, because it's a Batman Punisher crossover. Right, that's it can't part be of the too thing complicated. It's yeah. so frustrating for me where I'm like, all right, you know, the last few crossovers you did, Superman, Spider-Man, sure, the, the number ones, the A guys. Except really, Superman was getting help from Spider-Man. But, you know, Hulk, Batman, of course. They're both named Bruce. Uncanny <laughs> X-Men Titans. Yeah, they're both teen teams, and they were uh, huge sellers of their, of their respective companies. I get it. And then they're like, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Batman Punisher. Now, I get the correlation. Some people might think that Punisher and Batman have some kind of similarities. I mean, obviously they're, you know, they're 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 street level crime fighters in their own respects. Yeah, I mean, they don't have powers. Sure. They don't have powers. They're they, they're both men. The, they rely on gadgets. They do yep. indeed. One is good at them, and one uses guns. Yeah, I mean, Punisher is yeah. a pretty he's pretty tech savvy. You know, he's got that battle van. Right. And they both have <laughs> sidekicks who are also better at technology than they are. Hmm. And we'll see those in the Punisher Batman crossover when Robin fights Microchip over the internet. Yeah, but nice. if only Batman would use guns, then they could really get along. Well, well. that's true. Uh, but thankfully, we have a psycho Batman who doesn't mind killing people. Yeah, I mean, so this is perfect this is with perfect. John Paul Valley. Yeah. Batman that's like, oh, you're even closer to Punisher than Batman's and, ever been before. Exactly. And actually, if Marvel's going to make a Punisher Batman and DC's going to make a Batman Punisher and Bruce Wayne's going to be in the Marvel one and Jean-Paul's going to be the DC one, that's great. We get two completely different cross... And indeed they do. Like, you get two totally different crossovers yeah. out of it. Because Punisher is the same dupe in both crossovers. Right. He's just there. It's about Batman. And Marvel being like... As it should be. Right. <laughs> Because Marvel's like, 
uh, if we're doing a fucking Batman crossover, I want real Batman. Yeah. And we're going to make it good. Yeah. I mean, it's not He's like, great. what are you talking about? This is real Batman. This is our real Batman right now. And it's like, okay. He's just real with Batman. Any Batman ever was. No. He has staying power, I swear. The car. They don't even believe that. They, 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 <laughs> they're like, fuck this. They hate this guy. So Punisher makes his way into Gotham. He is looking for Jigsaw. That's it. Right. And he heard through the grapevine that Jigsaw is in Gotham. And he's like, there are a few places worse than New York. Gotham's one of them. <laughs> he goes to this seedy dive bar because he gets some tip from an informant that somebody who knows somebody might lead him to Jigsaw here in Gotham. So he goes there and he asks for help. There's this one street tough that gives him lip. So then Punisher and he fight. And then uh, what really happens is Punisher is doing all this as a smoke screen. When Punisher starts the fight with the other guy, he notices that this other guy, neither of whom have names, the other guy with the glasses is really concerned about the papers he has. Uh. And so Punisher- should be strewn out in, on a bar. I know. Like, what are you doing? Especially if those papers are super sensitive and you like want to protect the, yeah. you know, the, 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 the data within. Presumably they're evidence bar. of criminal activity. Uh, yeah. Nobody cares here. So Punisher mm -hmm. asks the glasses guy, like, what do you know about Jigsaw? Because the other guy is unconscious. Right. And he's like, I don't know Jigsaw. And then Punisher pulls out literally an Uzi. And he's like, okay, never mind. Hang on. I know that somebody who runs errands for Jigsaw sees him at a church, usually at like 11 o'clock. Okay. Because so, you can't mistake his face. Right, of course. So Punisher's like, okay, the, the dialogue for Punisher cannot hide Denny O'Neill's disdain for the character. He's a dumbass. He says dumbass stuff. He will never stop saying it. His final line of the book is the dumbest line Punisher's ever had in his history. <laughs> but he says things like, I hope you're lying. I still want to watch you bleed. And I'm like, that's a guy who's writing dialogue for Punisher when he's never been reading a Punisher book. I know what he is. I know what Punisher would say. Something like this. I want to kill you. I, I, I don't know. I, first pass. And that's the only pass we'll get. But then he goes, I noticed you cared about those papers. Well, gimme. And he just takes them and leaves. And he goes, sometimes I have hunches. And maybe those hunches will pay off for me. And he just takes the papers. He doesn't take all the papers. And your lunch money, too. Right. He just grabs those papers. He bunches them up and he shoves them in his pocket. And I'm like... Uh. What a genius. World's greatest detective, Punisher. <laughs> so Punisher leaves, and uh, so Jigsaw has been watching the whole thing happen on, like, closed-circuit television in a high-rise in Gotham. And Why? Because Jigsaw coordinated the informant that told Punisher to go to the bar in the first place. Oh. Like, what are you doing? now? Jigsaw Jig saw him coming and, like, set it all up. Jigsaw that ain't knew, bad. Jigsaw knew that Frank would follow him to Gotham, and right. so he set up a bunch of, like, false trails oh. to lead him to the bar to get more bad information because the glasses guy who definitely believes what he says is also definitely giving Frank bad information. So he is like, I am going to kill Punisher in Gotham and pull off my latest evil scheme. Because Jigsaw is also emotional because the reason he looks like that is because he used to be good looking and Frank pushed his face through a plate glass window. Right. And that, and they sewed his face together and now he looks like a jigsaw puzzle. There you go. I heard they got a great plastic surgeon here. They did a wonder for a guy named Joker. Or Two-Face. I thought you were gonna say Two-Face. <laughs> Cause he constantly gets a plastic surgery. That would be great. Two-Face does? Yeah, oh yeah, no. Every, okay. yeah, every to, like, like cover up every his... fourth story for Two-Face, they're like, you but you, he fixed you, Harvey. Oh, jeez. So Jigsaw is with Reimer in this like high rise. Okay. And proceeds to explain the, the plot. So Jigsaw is setting up shop in Gotham. He wants to be the ruler of the underworld. He also wants to run- and pick a different town. I know. No, he's funny because like, he's like, this plan would never have worked in New York, but it will definitely work here in Gotham. And I gotta give there's, him points. There's no way I can defeat the Kingpin. Well, well it's Penguin and <laughs> Mr. Freeze well, they and don't, Joker. None of them show up. Well, Joker maybe, but like none of the other guys show up in this. And no, he's, he's worried about like the police. He's worried about the police and, like, and the superheroes. Avengers. And, yeah, exactly. Like, there are no Avengers here. There's no Daredevil here. I'm yeah. good. I have to beat Punisher, and that's like only slightly harder than my usual business. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know if you've heard, but if things go real bad, there's a guy here named Superman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it won't get that bad. <laughs> but Superman doesn't come to Gotham. And it's 1994, he might still be dead. 
So. That's, oh, now that would be great plot point. If it's just like Superman died, Superman I'm in. Superman died. I'm going. Well, to Gotham. Then he should go to more Metropolis and run it. But like, anyway, Jigsaw's plan is he facilitated the theft of the rocket fuel ah, because it's rocket experimental fuel. rocket fuel. Uh huh. The rocket fuel, if it is exposed to water, will ignite the water like a fire. What? Okay. Yes. It's not like it covers the layer of the water. No, like, like gasoline. Gas oil. No, no it, it will set water on fire. Yes. Reimer explains, actually, it separates the oxygen molecules from the hydrogen molecules and ignites the oxygen. But the effect is still the same. The whole thing is, when you burn hydrogen and you consume oxygen in the air when you do that, it produces water. Yeah. Water is the lower energy state that results from combustion. <laughs> you can't reverse the process. It's no. already it's already happened. Well, You're already at the end product of combustion. Like you'd have to insert more energy into the water yes. to break it apart. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is not going to help you. No, but in this <laughs> universe, this is what happens. Okay. And the plan, the scheme is that Gotham is moving the water from their old reservoir into a new reservoir and he's going to burn the reservoir and then call the mayor and as a new contractor, having taken over the various contracting services in Gotham, oh, sure, yeah. he will get the juicy contract from the mayor to rebuild the reservoir. Right. Diabolical. <laughs> like what? <laughs> what are you, Lex Luthor from 1970 <laughs> fucking eight? No, yes. I'm, I'm actually just a two-bit crook. I, so. I suppose it depends on whether you know, Gotham City uh, owns right. their uh, waterworks, or if they hire a third party I, company sure to do. control the waterworks. They must because this is a classic Gotham villain plot. Like Joker right. poisons the reservoir every other Thursday. Right. So like, that's why he's like, oh my God. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. Oh, I know because it would never have worked in New York. But here maybe. He illustrates his point by the way, by pouring port wine on a, on a spider and setting it on fire. It, 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 by the way, I love the art in this book. It's frustrating how good it is. It's just like, I, I really like how it looks <laughs> and this book sucks. So Jigsaw's like, this is my whole plan. I'm gonna set Gotham's reservoir on fire using stolen governmental rocket fuel and then I will be the premier contractor of Gotham. I Mwahahaha. Love, I love that he pours water on the fire to extend his shit yeah. because it's port wine. Yeah. But I would have loved it even more if he tried to use the experimental fuel and be like, there, and he pours water on it. Oh no, oh God, what have I done? <laughs> and then they just have to leave the building. <laughs> How many buildings oh, you got? Oh, glass. So, fire department comes, makes it worse. Right. I don't understand. Yeah, and it's just, it just becomes this huge problem. We're like, oh no, now it's igniting the, 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 the oxygen molecules in the air, and now <laughs> the air itself is on fire. <laughs> Burning Earth, Batman <laughs> Punisher. So, <laughs> so Punisher goes to the church, but he's like, how come, like every once in a while you go to like a really shitty city and they always have this gorgeous church in the middle of all this garbage. And I'm like, fuck That man. was built a long time ago? Yeah, because when it was built, it was a nice neighborhood. Yeah, what do you right. want? It's really old. So he goes into the church. Not that hard of a question to answer. And he's looking around and there's nobody there except for a nun and she's just, like tossing holy water this way and that. Mm. And she splashes a little bit on his face and it's poisoned. It's not actually water. And it, it's like a neurotoxin. God, what? So it. he immediately is like, oh, and so his knees are weak and he falls apart and the nun leaves. And he can't even like pick up his gun. Like it's so heavy. Also, you may have noticed the Punisher is wearing a gigantic impossible coat in this story. Yeah. Uh, that is because he needs to use it to free himself from the fire that he will inevitably be engulfed in. Uh. Because of course, Jigsaw fed this faulty information so that Punisher would go to this church, which is laced with the experimental rocket fuel. Not all the rocket fuel, obviously I need to use that to cause the lake of fire, right. but uh, just enough to set this church on fire. And so Punisher finds himself shortly in a raging inferno burning this church down, which is also sad because of course Punisher points out this is a nice church in this really crappy neighborhood. Right. Well, there'll be nothing left. So Punisher uses his impossibly huge coat to protect himself from the flames, but of course don't forget, he's also infected with like a neurotoxin, so he barely makes it. He's trying to go to like the altar. He's like, maybe there's if, an exit. If he can't lift his gun. I, how I, can he shield himself with his coat? I know, I know. So, well, because it's just sheer force of will. And then the Green Lanterns get involved and he takes their Green Lanterns. No. <laughs> so he takes this coat and he puts it over his body and he just, he just crawls his way towards the altar 
hoping maybe there'll be an exit there. And I'm like, have you ever been in a church, Frank? I know you have. <laughs> That's There's not no where they put exit the exit behind the altar. That's where. No, no, no. They they cut they shoot out of the the altar, right? Yeah, they There's just like rise up. Yeah, exactly. There is well, not really a trap door, but you'll see. So he's gonna die, and then <laughs> Batman destroys this priceless stained glass window because That's fuck awesome. it, the whole church is a wash. Yeah. So Batman finds his way through there because. So the super religious Asriel destroys a stained glass window in a church. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah, I'm sure Saint Dumas is like, uh oh, what do you do for that? Like you said, a couple of e even more. As you're just going into the what, red. What, what's the what's the Saint Dumas in equivalent of saying Hail Marys? Like I don't know, setting fires because like you're the you know sort of Asriel. You, set, you, know, you gotta you gotta murder a few more of Saint Dumas' enemies. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Batman yeah. is here because he knows that tough Tony Bressy operates in this neighborhood. And I guess notice the fire uh, and makes a grand entrance for no reason whatsoever. Right. But discovers Punisher. Maybe there's people in there. Maybe. Let me smash through the window. Yeah. Nope. It's just Punisher. So he picks him up, oh. and then he finds that like the fire has made the floor weak enough that he's able to smash through the floor into the basement, which mm. he didn't know was there. And then he and Frank manage to escape through the basement and find their way back onto the street. And okay. I don't know, whatever. The neurotox only lasts like five minutes, so Punisher starts to snap out of it, and Batman's meeting the Punisher for the first time. Unfortunately, it's Jean-Paul, but whatever. And he's like, I came here because I was looking for, I was just wandering aimlessly because I'm an idiot, and uh, I find you, Punisher. I know you from the Wanted posters. And I'm like, it ain't the old West, man. Gotham doesn't have Wanted posters for the Punisher. Now, I will say, I used to see yes. Wanted posters in the post office. In the post office, but yeah. I don't think Jean-Paul is a letter-writing kind of guy. <laughs> But if he wants to be Batman and he doesn't know how, right. he might be like, well, where do they put wanted posters? That's true. And he might have asked someone yeah. and would have told them if you go to the post office. Or the back you can computer find them. gets that information from well, the Yeah, it's just a scan does. of a wanted yeah. poster. Yeah. But uh, so he's like, all right. And Punisher's like, uh huh, and you're Batman. I suppose you want to fight me and take me to jail. And he's like, yes. And he goes, or. And Batman's like, I'm listening. And Punisher's <laughs> like, or you and I team up and we. Murder Jigsaw. And Batman's like, Who? I don't know who that is. <laughs> yes. But you said murder, and you piqued my interest. Well, no, but that's what's so weird, is that he's already killed Abattoir, he's already being a fucking lunatic, but he's like, Punisher's no, but murderer, I don't murder, and I gotta, yeah. I gotta stop you. I gotta stop him. And it's like, right. what? Only I can... Can murder. Yeah. I, I get the list from St. Dumas, <laughs> who I can murder, and I had never heard of yeah. this Jigsaw. Yeah. Unless you want to, like, I don't know, join my church, or... <laughs> Whatever, yeah. then I can't abide your murdering. They, they, like, the only fun of having Jean-Paul and Punisher team up is to watch these guys cause a bloodbath. Because right. the other book with Bruce Wayne and Punisher could not be more diametrically opposed. Like one of the fan favorite moments of JLA Avengers is that Batman strays from his plan of teaming up with the Justice League to take recon of the Marvel Universe to beat the living shit out of Frank Castle. <laughs> I would like to see a full issue of that and we do. But with this, it's like, well, let's see the opposite of that. Let's watch the yeah. let's watch the wrong man in the Batman suit team up with the wrong guy to come to Gotham, and yet still be like, no, you're bad. Yeah, boring. But yeah. also, like, I guess they team up. But also, Jean Paul's a dumbass. We get to watch him be a dumbass. Right. So he's like, all right, let's go. And so you know, because Frank has to explain it to him, he's to spoon feed it to him, like. Jigsaw's working with Bressy. You're looking for Bressy. We'll 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 find them together. And then Batman goes, and the rocket fuel. And Punisher's like, what rocket fuel? <laughs> like, I, I'm not looking for rocket fuel. I'm looking for Jigsaw <sighs> to murder him. So right, that but that that's not a Batman plot. Right. The Batman plot is the, you is know, the somebody's trying to do something with the reservoir or whatever. Exactly. That's the thing well, he doesn't I even know do. what the reservoir. Oh, he just right. knows there's rocket fuel right, missing. Right, right, right. Yeah, from the, the FBI. I'm a, yeah. I have to help the FBI. Yeah, I'm sure they really appreciate your help. <laughs> so Batman and Punisher get into the Batmobile and they go to a like a, a hangout for former KGB agents who live in Gotham because. Oh they might know about stolen rocket fuel from the government. Uh, hey, uh, what do you know about stolen rocket fuel from the government? That, <laughs> that is almost verbatim what is said in this book. <laughs> when they go to the, to the illegal Russian bathhouse of Gotham. Right. Of course. Ugh. No, I can see that being a thing in Gotham. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, there's no, gotta it, be one. It is, but also like I've never seen one in a Batman book in my life. Right. The first Batman and only time I've ever seen a Russian bathhouse in Gotham. Right. So, Batman and Punisher 
face some beefy Russian dudes who tell them they're not allowed. They have like quips and it's just like, it's like if two dumbasses were teaming up and it's not like that at all. It, it is, is that, cause he, cause the, the guys are like, you're not allowed inside. And Punisher says, do you believe that? That we're not allowed inside? And Batman goes, no. <laughs> and then they beat them up. <laughs> so they beat up the guys and they go in and I love Batman walks into the steam and he goes, heat, bodies, it's like my vision. And I can imagine what? Frank going, oh, uh -huh. you're like not uh -oh. the Batman I heard about. <laughs> it's like my vision and I just have to dance. Yeah. <laughs> the vision wasn't about damnation. It was about this. Temptation. About <laughs> <laughs> so they, like, they, they, I love the wide shot of all these naked Russians just looking at him like, the fuck are you doing in here? <laughs> and why are you so clothed? Yeah. Aren't you a bit breathe, overdressed? Breathe, my <laughs> you are yucking my yum. <laughs> so the two of them go in and uh, Punisher goes, uh, any of you guys spies? What? Because like, we don't know which ones are ex-KGB spies and which ones are just Russians looking for a good soak. And so Batman goes, do you think they would tell you if they were? And he goes, probably not. And then a couple of Russians like- I guess let's kill them all. Right, so the Russians jump in, they have a big fight and uh, they're, uh, they're just beating the shit out of people. Yeah, like whoever attacks us the best is probably the KGB agents. You will love how this sequence goes. <laughs> they're easily winning. Right. And Punisher goes, hey, Batman, I'm getting bored. You got anything fun to show me? And so Batman takes out a gas grenade and tosses Frank a like gas mask. Oh. And then he just throws it at the ground and releases like a knockout gas into the bathhouse rendering everyone but Batman and Frank unconscious. Now, of course, Batman's wearing like a goddamn space helmet. Right, So he right. doesn't need the gas mask, right. but Punisher does. And so everyone's knocked out and they're like just looking at these guys. None of them are Reimer or Bressy or, or Jigsaw. And so then Punisher realizes, oh, Batman's a dumbass. So he goes, hey, maybe Reimer's here in disguise. And so Batman starts looking at all the faces while Punisher just leaves. Just pull on their faces. <laughs> see if the face comes off. So Punisher just bails on Batman and Batman goes, awesome. none of these men are disguised. So Punisher bails on him. And John Paul's like, no, <laughs> my crossover partner just abandoned me. St. Dumas, help me. <laughs> so St. Dumas appears before him in a what? paper dream. And he goes, steam is not fire. <laughs> you idiot. You came here for no reason. There's no oh reason for God. us to be here. And you lost your friend. Jeez, so buddy. Wait leaves. a minute. I, His vision was real? Yes. Like, he somehow no, it's, saw it's something like, about the lake of fire, which is the rocket fuel plan before he could have possibly well, known about it? Okay, so if you want to believe that St. Dumas is real and that he's communicating with Batman through some kind of like religious or psychic link, sure. I think that, because he doesn't learn about the rocket fuel after the vision. He already heard about the rocket fuel. I think that Denny O'Neill may be throwing Jean-Paul a bone and allowing Jean-Paul to have any cognitive ability whatsoever <laughs> and that he was linking the experimental rocket fuel. Like that Jean-Paul learned about the rocket fuel mm -hmm. and all of its properties and abilities already. Mm. And then assumed or maybe his 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 subconscious put two and two together yeah, about that, that weird right. training he got yeah that the system may be helping him f like fit a couple things together mm. about maybe well if anyone would steal the rocket fuel it's not like they're going to come to gotham and launch a rocket so what else would they do with this fuel well if the fuel can only ignite water and send rockets into space then it's only one of two things I think that he's like drawing two parallels and his visions are like the manifestation of his ability to like make clues come together. Also, it's a visual metaphor right. for like his madness and the story. <sighs> yeah. I don't want to give him any credit or suggest that St. Dumont is real in any way. So I like to think that maybe it's just his subconscious right. and he's just so addled that it has to come before him in the in like, you know, religious symbology. Okay. Saint Dumas reiterates the fact that there's like fiery water, not steam or naked Russians, you dumbass. So then, try again. Try Einstein. again. So Batman leaves and Punter's on a roof just watching Batman get into the car. And he goes, <laughs> he seems really upset. I feel kind of bad for ditching him, but but he's an idiot. I don't team up. 
I'm Punisher. I'm alone. Team ups. Yeah. Plus, maybe he was just like, "Let's team up until I can ditch you," because I don't team you up. seem like a loser. Like they were, they had a long car ride to the bathhouses, and he's like, "This guy, all he could talk about <laughs> is Saint Dumas, like he's one of them." And he listened to the worst music. Oh my god, it's all Gregorian chants. <laughs> so he's like, "I gotta kill Jigsaw. That's why I'm here. That's all. That's yeah. why I'm, I'm, I'm anywhere." Don't worry about that rock and fuel. I'm also gonna let somebody else kill Jigsaw. Right. No. So. I love the visual. It's such a great, the art is so good in this book. It's so frustrating. Mm. But I love that, um, that the, the, the visual of Batman driving in the Batmobile with an empty seat next to him mm. in this fucking crossover. Yep. It's amazing. Like, no one wants to cross over with him. <laughs> yeah, also, he's, he's in like the, the crossover and the character seat. won't show yeah. up. But he's like, okay, yeah. the saint won't help me. Nobody will help me. The only, guy I just met won't help me. If only Punisher hadn't escaped. No, I don't need help from the Punisher. Wayne would have figured it out. He'd use the computers. And I'm like, you use the computers. That's all you're doing is relying on the computers. So he just links the computers for information about tough Tony Bressy. Computer, tell me the answer. Yes. Computer, hello. Yeah. And so basically the computer tells him like where Bressy owns like property. He's like, okay, maybe Jigsaw took over properties that Bressy had. I'll go there. Uh, okay. I don't know, man. These here, uh, here's some addresses. Yeah, the computer's like, I don't know. Uh, I so don't he know what just you want, man. so he goes into a building, and thankfully it is a building that is occupied by both Rhymer and Jigsaw. Ugh. And Batman notices that like no, actually he drives, he pulls up to the building and he sees that there's one light on. So he goes up to the one room with a light on, and he like he he. I love that he takes the time. Like he's Jean-Paul Valley Batman. He just smashes through doors. There's one person, like there's one door. There's one light on. <laughs> but he takes out like a little listening surveillance device and puts it against the door oh. and hears. He's detecting, Sal. Right, look at him being the world's greatest detective. <laughs> so he is listening in and he hears like Rhymer being referred to by name by Jigsaw and how they're already moving the water into the new reservoir and the rocket fuel and the primer explosive are all set up and they're all ready to go and this is gonna be great I'm and, gonna make all this money and real Batman's been replaced by some like fucking, fucking psycho idiot. so no one will be able to stop us <laughs> and he's like, like hey hey <laughs> no that's me but uh no do people he would know mistake that he'd be like I haven't been replaced I'm right here yeah what are you talking about is a new Batman in town so do, do people know that there's a new Batman? I mean, or by now they like, do. Batman just dresses weird now. In a re okay, so like when Batman pawned off the job to Jean-Paul and he was wearing the Batman suit normally, right. they tried to fool Commissioner Gordon and he seemingly is fooled, but like is a little suspicious. Mm. But then in later stories, especially No Man's Land, Gordon's like, I don't know why you thought that I would fucking fall for that shit. <laughs> But like, I know what your chin looks like and what you sound like. And you replaced yourself with some unqualified jackass who almost plunged the whole city into darkness after Bane. Like, you have a lot to answer for. It's just so great to see that. <laughs> That's sort of to question the whole thing. Right, like, like it made me go, well, and it, after No Man's Land, he is like, fuck Batman. Like, this is the last straw. Nightfall yeah. was like strike two. Yeah. And now we're here. Yeah. I can't. Uh, I can't. No. I arguably should never have yes. condoned you. Oh, no, there's an, entire, you. there's an entire act of No Man's Land where Gordon's like, no more Batman. <laughs> we never needed him. We should never have relied on him. I made a mistake. Wow. He loses the faith, and it's fucking dope. Not like this. When the art is really good and they practically draw his insane gauntlets, mm -hmm. like when he closes his fist, there's still sharp edges to the to the fist. Yeah. So like whether he's punching people or he's backhanding them, he is stabbing them. <laughs> there's yeah. only stabbing occurring. And so with whenever his he does a backhand, there's blood shooting out of their faces. Right. And I love the attention to detail there. Yeah. There's one where he's in the bathhouse and it seems like he just goes like, huh. Ah, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what it looks like he does. That's horrific. So he grabs Rhymer and he's like, okay, explain the water. What's going on here? So then Rhymer explains the whole plot about the ignition of water, and he says, fiery water. What do I do to stop it? And like, you can't. It's gonna happen in 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Yep. And so Batman gets in the Batmobile and he drives down to the reservoir in eight minutes. Yeah. And he doesn't know what to do. Because he can't call Alfred. <laughs> yep. He can't talk to a Robin. Nope. He has no friends. That's right. 
and he's also an idiot who just didn't ask any more questions about the implementation of this rocket fuel. Right. So he's just he's just at the reservoir, just looking at it, <laughs> and he's like, I don't even know where the primer is. Okay, Saint Dumas, I'm here. What do I do next? Yeah. Right. I would love that because Saint Dumas would be because Saint Dumas is just a projection of his subconscious that go. Um, go right. <laughs> like, I don't really know, because I'm you. Oh. So he gets into a wrecking ball crane machine, and he smashes the reservoir right as the primer is activated. So some of the water is caught on fire. But instead of it spilling into the new reservoir, it spills, quote, harmlessly into the street. <laughs> What? Harmless? I'm like, that's so then, the Gotham. Right, so then Gotham burns. Like, no. Oh, my God. But it does. It just it just doesn't, like, burn the city down. Because it should be just a wave of fire hitting buildings. Yeah. That right. were built in the 1700s. No. Instead, it just, wow. it just dissipates. And I was going to say, a wrecking ball is the worst idea. At least you have it contained in one spot. I know. Just turn it off. Nope, he just smashes it. And wow, like, God, oh. I'm just looking at it. I'm just marveling yeah. at Gotham's reservoir. Right. It is a gigantic fucking structure. Yes, in the like middle they, of the city. They built concrete walls yes. to to pour Contain. water into. That, yes. that, that is not what I thought the reservoir was. I thought no. the reservoir was like a reservoir. In any like, other book. Yes. On the outskirts like, hey, of no. the city. Maybe man-made, but looks like a lake. No. Yeah. In, in Batman, uh, uh, the man who laughs, it doesn't look like that. Okay. No, no, it's not that. This is a reservoir from, like, freaking Blade Runner. Yeah, no, it looks like they <laughs> yeah. converted an elevated train system <laughs> to a reservoir. <laughs> so Jigsaw thinks that it all worked out, and so he's on the phone. Well, I heard a big explosion. No, he didn't even do that. He's just, he's in another place, and he's on the phone with his mysterious benefactor. There's another character who had fed Jigsaw this plot in the first place because Jigsaw didn't even have this idea to himself. Like, you've just robbed Jigsaw of any agency he might have had. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I know. I mean, Jigsaw being like, I'm gonna own the only construction company, like, that's Jigsaw. But like, right. but like making the reservoir catch on fire, that requires the criminality and genius of some other established villain. <laughs> oh. And we don't know who it is, but Jigsaw's on the phone with him, and Punisher just sneaks up behind him and goes, I'd ask who you were talking to if I cared. And I'm like, okay, nice to know that uh, Punisher graduated the fifth grade. So, <laughs> I can't believe he doesn't shoot him. Yeah, why isn't he dead You're already? Right because he would be dead. Because he literally goes, any last words? And then in Punisher's ongoing narrative, he goes, dumb, when it's time to shoot, shoot. But he doesn't. Right. So Jigsaw gets the drop on him and immediately pulls out a gun and starts firing at Frank Frank takes a bullet in the arm and throws his knife. I aim for his heart. I miss. But he doesn't miss the heart and hit him in the shoulder. He hits him in his hand holding the gun. You didn't miss. <laughs> you fucked up. I aim for his heart. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Because if you aim for his heart, it would have been anywhere <laughs> in the midsection. Yeah. How did you expertly disarm him? Without harming him in any way yeah. when you were aiming for his heart. Right. Also, aimed... you didn't shoot him in the face when you had the chance. It sounds like you don't want to kill him. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like you're <laughs> as crazy as an outhouse rat. So Jigsaw makes his way out. Punisher commits three cardinal sins that he would never commit in any Punisher comic book. <laughs> A, talking before shooting. <laughs> yep. B, throwing a knife and hitting a completely different region. <laughs> And C, looking at his superficial arm flesh wound. No, he doesn't care. Allowing Jigsaw right. to run away. Uh. Thankfully, they're at the top of a high rise, so Jigsaw just runs out to the balcony. So Punisher jumps on Jigsaw, and the two of them have a fight. Jigsaw is also portrayed as what? massive for some reason. I don't know why. So Punisher and Jigsaw fight, and they just grapple on the rooftops. Mm -hmm. And Punisher realizes that like this guy is bigger than me and stronger than me. So thankfully, Jigsaw commits a cardinal sin himself by just trying to jump on him. And Punisher just hakitos him and just throws him over the side of the building. Just oh. whoop, over the side. All right, problem solved. That's the end of that. Sweet. But then Batman swings in. Yeah. What? And I'm like, why would he do that? You, you <laughs> let Abattoir die of a similar fate. Yeah, I don't even know this guy though. Maybe he's innocent. You know he isn't. <laughs>
So, so no, Jigsaw had no like informants or anything watching what would happen at the reservoir. He's just like, no, it'll probably work. He only dedicated that kind of manpower and technology to divey bars, observing <laughs> when Punisher is getting misinformation. <laughs> right. And churches. And churches. Right. I do like a little bit of this because we see, you know, Punisher's ongoing narration. We never really get into Batman's subconscious because all we do see is like images of fire and Templar knights. Mm -hmm. So with Punisher's ongoing narration, he's like, something bursts in the shadows. I see what he wants to do. I wonder if he could possibly make it. And I like the idea of somebody like kind of observing Batman for the first time being like, there's no fucking way. Right. And then seeing the impossible done. So Batman knocks Jigsaw through a plate glass window himself. It doesn't cause him, cause him to become like more Jigsaw. Oh, come on. That would have been perfect. <laughs> I know. Jigsaw again. Ah. But Batman does reveal that he came back to like, I guess, apprehend Rhymer, but finds Jigsaw instead. And so Batman ties up Jigsaw with ropes and then leaves him behind for the police, which he'll call, I guess, on his way home. <laughs> Or leaves it behind for Punisher to murder him. He should, uh, but neither happens. Instead, the Joker shows up because the Joker was the guy who came up with the Lake of Fire plan for Jigsaw in the first place. And the Joker was hanging out in the room that Batman happened to swing Jigsaw into. Maybe he while was in an adjoining him. room and heard it happen, but he did immediately. He's like appear. following him around. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he so, has to keep the light off. Right. So Joker shows up and he's like, "Hey, hey!" And he says, "Like 16 groaners." Uh, Jigsaw is like, "Jesus! Like, shut up." And then offers, uh, and, and then Joker, of course, like, frees Jigsaw and then seemingly teams up with him, which will be paid off in the sequel, uh. which we already covered. So then Batman faces Punisher, and he's like, You're not my friend. You're not right. my friend. I'm going to punch you. I, I, I saved the city anyway, kind yeah. of. And now I'm going to take you down, because I said I was going to when this was over anyway. Right. And so Punisher and Batman attack. I love Punisher's description of him. He says... I can see why the mooks are scared of him. He comes at me like something from a kid's worst nightmare. And I love the visual of him, like, with his stupid arm <laughs> claws and his silly helmet. And it's just like, yeah, he's scary. Like, Batman is just like, I have a growl that I pulled from the Serengeti and I scooped <laughs> a couple of TV thieves. In this one, a literal, like, knife monster. <laughs> Who's coming after you. Blast yeah. out of the shadows with like actual glowing red eyes and he's right. gonna stab me to death. Yeah. That is genuinely scary. And of course his first move is to slash, like to to gut him. Right. Like like some kind of jungle cat. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like like if I hadn't dodged, I would be dead right now. Yes! I love that the fight comes at the end. Yeah. 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 You know, normally they fight, they test their metal, and then they team up to fight the villain. In this one, they teamed up. And then one of them is like, this guy sucks, and bails on him. And then the two of them basically Continue to hate each other. wrap up the plot with by themselves. So they fight, and uh, eventually Punisher just shoots Batman in the chest with his gun. Oh. And that knocks Batman back. Right. And thankfully he's wearing full body armor, so he's able to avoid serious injury. So Batman and Punisher, like, grapple. You know, mm. Batman goes after him. They have this dialogue. I'm going to share it. He says, sorry, pal, but I had to stop you. Batman, you didn't. Punisher, then what's it going to take? And Batman says, more than you'll ever have. I'm like, Ugh. yeah, this is pretty authentic. Yeah, yeah. Just two fucking idiots just trying to out cool each other. Yep. Punisher ends up, this is where he references the, the pouches. The oh, pouches. yes. He, he remembers the knockout gas grenade. So he... he he pickpockets Batman's utility belt, pulls out the gas grenade, and throws it against Batman's helmet, knowing that he didn't have time to turn on the breather oh. apparatus. I thought it was just part of the helmet. Yeah, I thought it so should too. be. But he it's saw him like, turn it on, I guess. I mean, he doesn't even mention it. He just says, like, he won't have time to activate his breathing device. I mean, you don't know how it works, <laughs> Punisher. Also, you true. can't say that. This is a this is a, this is a fucking grenade that knocked out a room of giant men. <laughs> he set it off right next to his he own set it face. Off right next to his own face with no gas mask, but he's fine. Right. Well, I know it's coming, and as soon as I let it go, I'll run away. And hold my breath. I'll use my Aikido <laughs> to roll away from the gas, <laughs> yeah. and I'll divert its energy away from oh. me. Oh. Yeah. So he just avoids him, and it's just so frustrating how good this... Yeah, it looks really I, good. I never forgot how good this cloud looks. Like, Jean-Paul's Batman suit has this giant fucking headlamp on his chest. And it's like, it must be on, and it's illuminating the gas, and it reflects yeah. in his helmet. And I'm like, that looks so good. It looks really good. So Punisher pulls out his gun, 
like again, even though we've established it doesn't right. have any effect on him. <laughs> and he points it at Batman and he says, "Hey man, I cheated, okay?" And then his because monologue he feels bad for him. He does. He says that the pistol feels like a lump of coal in his fist. <laughs> A lump of coal? And I'm like, what, like, like Santa, Santa delivered it to you? Because <laughs> you're a bad little fight. boy? Like, what the fuck does that mean? I don't understand this book as, anymore. As a kid, I was like, yeah. Yeah. But like, like what? coal. <laughs> An adult would never think that. No. Only a child would. <laughs> but then, apropos of his awful line, his monologue goes, dumb. But I had to say something. And I'm like... You no. didn't need either of those No, lines. you don't get to say, no, I know it's dumb as the writer. Just don't write it don't, if don't it's dumb. Don't put that. No, no, no. I have to make the Punisher seem dumb. Yeah, the Punisher DC is book. dumb. Yeah, but both of your protagonists are dumbass. <laughs> hey, John Paul Valley is awesome and cool. Look at what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. No, they hate him. Yeah, Denny he just got beat by the Punisher yeah. with a freaking <laughs> grenade. <laughs> he's literally just like... <laughs> <laughs> and then he turns around and Punisher has a gun on him. He's like... Oh! So Punisher just leaves him to throw up in his own helmet. He doesn't really, but like, let's just see what he does. I like that idea. And he awesome. Just, so he leaves. He just goes like, Ugh. Oh, and God, it's filling up the helmet. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, Punisher just walks away. Yep. He goes, I'm going to leave him a second time in this story. Yeah, yep. I bail on him once again. So he leaves. And then, the, you know, the gas dissipates. And then Batman just leans against the railing and he goes, Saint Dumas, I failed you! And he, and he begs Saint Dumas for forgiveness. He goes, Is that too much to ask? I guess it is. <laughs> At the end of the book! Batman's never been lamer. Oh my god. And he just stands there and just goes, like, Well, at least I look kind of cool. <laughs> I mean, he does look kind of cool. And thankfully, no one will ever, like, report what happened here today. No one will remember my abject failure at. Defeating Jigsaw or the Punisher. Until I die and St. Dumas judges me. Right, which is coming. I mean, at the very least, I will be judged. Yeah, by the readers. Yeah, Jeez. heavily. He is so friggin' emo. <laughs> he says he knows that a place of torment does not have to be a lake of fire. Yes. It could be a city that is lonely and filled with failure. His own. Yeah. Nor must the damned always shriek and moan. Sometimes they suffer in silence. Oh. oh. But I do shriek and moan, though. Yeah. I'm not going with you now. Yep. But, wow. but I am on the inside. This is a story about how lonely <laughs> John Paul Valley Batman is. Yes. That, that scene, I'm glad you That's called out when he's in the car. Yeah. And they show and they the show empty, the empty seat. seat. Yeah. That's like the theme. The theme is loneliness. But that's what happens when you fire everyone that Batman works with. That's and right. Yeah. With well, yeah. I mean, he he brings it on himself, and yeah. I guess that's also like realistic. Yeah. Like people who are like depressed. Yeah. Might isolate themselves from totally. people, which then makes them feel more lonely and depressed. Yeah. It's a vicious circle. It is. Cycle. Yeah. I love it. But he does look like a badass. That cape. Yeah. Cape looks I mean, cool. It's funny the cape looks like alternately like cool and like manic yes because like there's there's string like it's there's just wisps of it that shoot out yeah it's just it's just everywhere it's yeah. chaos it's there's one where, scene where he's running to the car yeah and you can see it from frank's viewpoint uh -huh. like up high it's just this like this like it's just a messy mass. looking blob thing heading for the batmobile yeah, yeah that. it's like a big shadow just yeah. going for the for the car spawn yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. 1994. Yep. This will not be the number one best-selling intercompany crossover of the year. <laughs> we know what that is. Spawn Batman. Number two, Batman Spawn. <laughs> and yeah. uh, uh, I should also point out that those were not just the best-selling intercompany crossovers of 1994. They were also the best-selling books of the year. This wasn't even the top two or three. Yeah. But you know what? It made enough money that DC and Marvel were like, this is going around. All right. It's going pretty good. <laughs> This is a good idea. I'm glad we're doing this. We should keep it up. We should keep doing this. And I'm glad they did because, you know, the next one's better. Yeah. But, like, it is it is still really dumb. <laughs> yeah, but the next one also looks better in my opinion. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's John Arena Jr. at, like, the height of him establishing the look he will be known for. So if yeah. you if you hate Romita Jr., you will loathe Punisher Batman. Right. But if you love John Arena, you might still hate it because there's a lot of doing this <laughs> in that issue. Uh, but yeah. it is also John Romita Jr. like drawing Batman professionally for the first time. Yeah. But what's interesting about my delving into this, I really like, I got into the weeds when it came to this this crossover. And 
I like started really like uh, reading the wizards and getting through it. Uh huh. I I was I, I had a, a almost out of body experience where <laughs> because I of the was wizards. because of the wizards that that is to say uh, no like reading these wizards and like looking back at news and reporting and speculation and solicitations in 1994. I was like almost in, like brought back mentally to that time, mm. and it was dark. Like it was <laughs> a dark time. Like Jack Kirby just died. Mm. The in, the industry is heading toward cataclysmic failure. Right. We're watching speculation reach critical mass, and it's just like it's a really interesting moment for me where I'm watching. I'm just I'm clutching it, and this in this ugly, dumb miserable almost nihilistic crossover is the is the focal point i'm trying to get at whilst navigating through this really like shadowy period in comic book history mm. it was just very interesting to like to transport myself back to that time yeah. and like how how dark it must have been there are, uh, i had to read like at least like six different wizards because i was like okay well this came out in like the summer of 94 the next one will come out in october of 94 so I, what 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 was the Wizard that came out the month before this book came out, because that'll probably be where those solicitations are, and it was. Um, but sifting through, I was like, well, how, where, how far back do the solicitations go where the costume changes, you know? <laughs> so I had to go back further. So I'm going- And what's happening at that time? Like, are the stories getting more sad and well, depressing? I'm going back and I'm like looking at like all the news headlines that were printed to treat, see if I can find anybody talking about it. and. Incidentally, the only blurb I could find about this crossover was everybody talking about how excited they were about the Marvel one and Denny O'Neill having to say that he thinks that this one will make a bunch of money. That was the only <laughs> quote about the Batman Punisher crossover. I think it'll make a bunch of money. Like, and it was, he was more diplomatic about it, but it right. was the only positive. The only line at all was, we think that people will buy it. You know, everybody else being like, man, John Armita Jr. and Chuck Dixon wrote all these characters and we're doing all this, this stuff. It's really exciting. And I think people will buy this one. <laughs> I mean, that's got to be depressing for Jenny. Yeah. And, I, and, and especially because we cracked it. Like when I was a kid, I was just like, dumb. But like we cracked it. Like this is a, this is a book about something. It's about mental illness. It's yeah. about loneliness. It's a, it, you know, it, there's, there's something there. And it's this interesting character study and also like a weird snapshot of history. Cause like there is, there, there is value to the idea of like, you know, exploring the, the isolation of a hero and, mm. you know, like the, the, you know, undiagnosed and untreated mental <laughs> illness and, you know, like, but, but also yeah, psychosis and psychosis, but also you're <laughs> looking at images of but, lakes of fire. Yeah. And stuff. But you're also like, you're looking at like, what the fuck is he wearing? And who, who the hell is <laughs> why, John why Paul Valley? Like that? Yeah. Well, well, what is even happening? What, what is even happening? Like I need Where's context. Robin? Yeah. And it's like, you, Alfred? you need no Where's context. Where's my Batman? Right. Yeah. Like, wh wh where are any of the things that make this a Batman comic? Like, like, yeah, I understand there's value, but like, to what end? And I'm like, yeah, fair, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fucking mm. weird. So, th I, I would recommend you check it out, obviously, because Marvel and DC refuse to pull their heads out of their asses or dedicate any amount of money to lawyers coming up with any kind of mutual long-term plan to reprint these books. Yeah. You'll have to just hunt in your bargain bins or eBay, but it's collected in Crossover Classics Volume 2, and also, it's available in any comic book convention in the dollar bins mm -hmm. to get the Batman Punisher crossover. So, that's that. And you need that one so you can read the next one and right. know what's going on. Yeah, you, you, you stamped on. Like, <laughs> because literally, like the only thing you do know is that Jigsaw is still in Gotham. And I guess he, oh, that's right. He, he got the plastic surgery he needed. Right. That's the that's the story. Yeah, and then Punisher fucks up his face again. That's right. <laughs> but he also like hangs out with the Joker. Yes, yes, we do get and look, we get the 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 reason to read Punisher Batman is to read the last three pages when Punisher tracks down Joker in the alley, and Joker tries to pull a killing joke on him. He says, this situation reminds me of a joke. <laughs> there are these two guys in a lunatic asylum, and Punisher's backhands and pulls out his gun. He's like, I'm gonna put fucking this bullet in your brain, you piece of shit. <laughs> and Joker's like, holy shit, this motherfucker's actually gonna kill me. 
<laughs> and then to see Batman go like, oh, I gotta Duh. fucking save the Joker. I can't believe I have to save the Joker again. <laughs> yeah. Batman Punisher, I actually looked at the old episode and I was like, we will never do it. I'm like, so here's here's to that one. Happy to be wrong. Happy to I be guess. wrong. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about that. I'm glad we did it because we got a good episode out of it. I think. Yeah. But uh, and much like Punisher and Batman broke their truce, you broke your promise. That's true. Doing that. I did. So uh, let us know in the comments down below. What are some books that I said we'd never do? <laughs> so I can break those promises as well. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time with a whole new episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Keep reading. Looking forward to 2023. Yeah, I think it's gonna be pretty fucking crazy. Uh, we should have someone get all the books that you said we'd never, and then like keep one of them. Right. 